Hi, I'm Tom Kyling, and I'm a member of the uh, Squan Village Historical Society. And in, uh, in the interest of uh, preserving some history on this uh, storm, I put together uh, some footage here. This is from 1985. Uh, it's down the inlet. And uh, what I want to do is just show you uh, in uh, perspective of what it looked like back then, and uh, hopefully you get a comparison during the taping, so as you can see before and after. So uh, what we're going to do, is we'll start out with uh, what you see here, beach shot, summertime, 1985, different angle shots, and uh, then we're going to go and uh, add all the footage that's been accumulated from uh, people from around Manasquan who, through their efforts, have uh, videotaped the uh, storm, and we're going to assemble that all together. And then I'm going to return for a before and after. And that's what I plan to do on this tape. This is out at the end of the uh, inlet. And, uh, of course, we have a picture here of the uh, tower. That, of course, did go out in the storm. That's no longer there, so... I took care of the, the storm took care of that. And we do have a picture of the plaque of 1982 from the Army Corps of Engineers. That, of course, is still there. There's the macadam, and uh, later you'll see... Uh, the damage comparison shots. There's the, uh, of course, the Coast Guard, and in the back you can see the uh, water line, and, and this is just a good shot that later when the storm is in its fury, you'll see it's a good comparison shot to show you the water level. Uh, it's a good reference shot. There's another, this is from 1991, uh, last year. Uh, you can see that the macadam and stuff is in pretty good shape. And, uh, well, as uh, we progress on now, we're going to have a tape from uh, Frank Deanna coming up. And uh, that'll show the storm down at the inlet in, in, the, in the beginning. And then we're going to show the storm in its progression. And in its fury to its maximum point. And, and what you're looking at now, these shots, Brielle Road in this case, we're going to come back to these, and we're going to look at it after the storm. Okay, this footage right now you're looking at was shot by Frank Deanna.
All right, now at this point, we're going to move down to the uh, Glimmerglass Marina for some footage provided by uh, Tom Hurst. That's the railroad tracks. They're in, flooded in water. As you can see, I think pretty well flooded. All the boats are off the blocks. See if you can get this shot out. We got boats floating all over. Just incredible. We're gonna scab. Underwater. Which one? Who's Gary? My one over here. He's not doing too good.
Well, you know how high the tide is if they're going up the street. All right, this footage you're seeing now will be coming up. We shot by uh, Gary Chapman on uh, Deep Creek Drive. He's right off of uh, Brielle Road and across from the arena. Flood has reached tremendous proportions. It is now entering homes. You can see how high it is. It up, it's up on uh, these street signs. Water will be entering plenty of boats. Boats are all over the place now. Gary's walking down to the end of the driveway here. Look how high it is. Good luck with this. Whoa. Front porch, we walk up on the steps here. The uh, sailboat that left its mooring is now tied up up near the Cummins house. The water is completely connected with the inlet at this point. that appeared to be securely fastened were down on trailers. The water is picking up a trailer. This particular boat right in front of me is on a trailer. You can see the tops of trailers where it picked boats up and pulled them right off. rescue boats going up and down Brielle Road. The Coast Guard just went up and down Brielle Road trying, uh, attempting to probably get people who are stuck in some of the homes along the uh, Brielle Road up to the beach. 30 or so and the wind has even picked up worse. You can see the water coming down Brielle Road. Things are just being washed completely down the road. At this point, we're waiting for the Coast Guard boat, which is on Deep Creek Drive, I mean on Brielle Road, with people that have been uh, evacuated. Coast Guard boat making a rescue. down Brielle Road to rescue more people. Three hours past high tide, the water is still up, and the wind has picked up to now, I would assume this is, has to be hurricane force. Things are blown off boats now, the covers are not hanging on to anything. See the wind coming down Brielle Road off the ocean. The water is still up as high as it can get. Here was shot by uh, Ted Griffith. He lives on Brielle Road, which is right across from the marina and uh, Deep Creek. With all of our firewood I so carefully piled up all summer from Aunt Mary's house. The whole pile is washed away. boat sticking out from behind the castaways that came from uh, poor Tommy's marina. None of his workers can get in here to help him try and tie up the boats. And the water's too deep now anyway. Not the way you can see it, but here's a boat, another boat coming out of the lagoon going across the, going across the road. It's 
There's that boat that was behind the castaways. That's trying to get out by the real bridge out into the waterway there. See? The Coast Guard coming up Riel Road. Glad we shut the garage door. Yeah. On by here. I never thought I'd see waves outside my dining room window. Coast Guard auxiliary boat still holding up. There's my dock ladder over there, caught on those floats. The town? his shingles off his house across the street here. This uh, expresses the sentiments of a lot of people here at the beach after this storm passes. Waterfront property, yeah. Okay, this is uh, footage provided by myself. Uh, this is uh, from my home, looking out the kitchen window, looking over to Cedar Avenue. The truck's driving up and down the street there. Uh, Everything I've seen in the past, Brielle Road, the uh, inlet, this is all within the same hour time frame. When the water was going down Brielle Road and uh, everything, this is what was happening over our way. It wasn't quite as bad or as high of tide, but uh, in 20 years that I've been down here, I've never seen the water quite this high. It came up uh, probably in the backyard. Now, let's see, we're looking at uh, South Jackson Avenue at the water level. It's it's come up to pine in the past but never has come up this high. This is a uh, Euclid looking east towards the ocean or see it was a good day for the ducks. That's the corner of uh, South Jackson and Euclid. There's uh, Bob Riddle's house. See the water level right up there. And then we look down again, South Jackson. And if you look close, you'll see a fellow down there in a, looks like a rowboat. Getting out of the old house. It, uh, around the house, I uh, looked on the wind meter, we're up around 40, 45 gusts, pretty strong. This shot here was taken by Monmouth Cable. That's down by the uh, railroad station there. It's Warren Avenue, it runs adjacent to the tracks. It's right down where they're building that new uh, new station store. 
and this is some more Malmouth cable footage of East Main Street. This is uh, the next day, Monday, uh, a couple days later, but still the water is uh, right up there. All right, this is uh, Stockton Lake Boulevard. Uh, this footage was provided by uh, Connie Watkins. The worst we've ever seen. Well, what I'd like to provide here is a, uh, a map to show the path that we uh, took in following the storm. We would start out the inlet with Frank Deanna's tape. Then we went across to uh, Deep Creek Drive to the marina. And we observed uh, from around the shots there. We got the shots of the storm and whatnot. From there, we went across the street to uh, Ted Griffith's house on Brielle Road. Saw angles from there. Then we went over to, uh, we saw a car parked in the water that was over on uh, Warren Avenue. That was the Monmouth Cable shot. Then we uh, traveled down to my house on Euclid Avenue. And uh, down on uh, South Jackson. Remember we saw that guy in the boat, in the uh, rowboat coming out of the house down South Jackson. And then the ducks were swimming across the street over there by Bob's house on the corner. Then we went over to Stockton Lake Boulevard, and that's where we saw that car underwater and uh, shots from the house. So there's a, a quick update for what you have up to now. Right now what I'd like to do is uh, show you a few quick befores and afters. Okay, of course this being the inlet in 1985 and this being the storm in 1992. Hey, this is uh, Brielle Road, normal conditions, and then a little flood comparison. This is the marina, Glimmerglass Marina, calm day, then the uh, follow-up with the storm shot. This is my street, Euclid. That's where the ducks were swimming before. Then down South Jackson, the fellow in the rowboat. There's the Macadam, 1985, after the storm. There's the beach office, 1991, there's the retaining wall. Wall right here. Uh, that you're looking at used to extend all the way across here. As far as I'm painting, used to be along the front, uh, all the way over, all the way over to this point right here. Right now, we got some uh, footage shot by, I'm going to take a stab at this, Greg Thomaluka, T H O M U L K A. He uh, 
shot this video. Uh, it's damage of the beachfront. Did a nice job. All the equipment. Uh, this wall right here uh, that you're looking at used to extend all the way across here. As far as I'm painting, it used to be along the front. Uh, all the way over, all the way over to this point right here, which is the Coast Guard Station. Um, the debris that's all left over from the sand dunes. Let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. These, uh, these bricks that you see scattered about this parking lot, that was part of the wall that I was just painting over. That was part of the retaining wall. As you can see, it's all over the yard. All these houses never had this, much, this exposure. This is the other side of First Avenue. Um, they never, never exposed. You could never see the ocean from where I'm at now. Just now they got prime view. In front, this area here used to be an outdoor snack bar. Um, built real nice. Uh, of course, all the fencing is missing. That's how I can shoot on the inside. Uh, there were some houses next to it. This is a look at what happened to them. It's what's called dental board. All those shingles are ripped down. They lost their retaining wall between the two houses. Uh, these were not very good houses anyway. This is more like summer rentals, shacks, but nonetheless, they took some damage. There's a see the height of the sand. They've been working on this road heavily. Um, they've duned up some of the sand. They're going to move to other beaches. Um, not much destruction down here, but because it's open from the beach, they took on all the sand and all the water. Um, you can see where it's been dug out, and I can't impress upon you enough that how much this does look just like a big snowstorm. A of a guy, kind of interesting, I just caught him, he just dug out his car. His car was completely surrounded by sand. He's been brewing it off, and now he's trying to get it running. I don't think he took on that much water, but uh, as you can see, he's brewing off his engine now. He was all dug in there. That's all, all the dirt you see around his car is things he's hand shoveled away. A bit further. You can see the foundations exposed on this house, but wait till I paint over and see what happened. The whole corner of the house split off. That's all open air. Right from that wall, right across, there's this outside wall just hanging. They have done some work here too. They've taken away the front wall and it looks like they're throwing a lot of rubbish and stuff in that side room. You can see where it's ripped off completely from the house. We all believe that this house is probably going to be condemned. See the front steps twisted and mangled. All the concrete in the front. They lost some windows. They lost the better part of the roof. Maybe they're not going to condemn it. It looks like it's already been reshingled to protect against more rain. Um, this, this whole area here, um, this foundation washed out. This was a very main thoroughfare for the ocean when it came through. You can see how it just dug a, dug a uh, bite out of sand. If you can look closely on the wall, you'll see that there's line. That's where the sand used to be. That was the height of the sand all along, right along the front part here. That divide these two elms. That whole foundation went underneath. You can see the spaces between the bricks all the way out to the street. Looks like they have done some patchwork. Of course, you can see the amount of sand. That's an entire stairwell that's completely covered under. I imagine there's about another five steps underneath that sand. And of course, once again, all the snow fence you see was what was uh, around all the dunes. Of course, it's just a mangled mess. It's all over the place. And this whole area right here, all the way down the line, was dunes. One of Anaheim's favorite houses. The entire underneath wiped out. Uh, looks like the main foundation of the house is okay. Steps are gnarled. Well, it just looks like the front porch was destroyed. But they are hanging a little bit, so I don't know what that means. A uh, concrete not standing up <laughs> to, the, to the ocean. This, uh, this was a whole concrete deck. Uh, it's completely undermined. Some of it has gone down. Once again, as you can see, let's zoom back into that. There's some of the snow fence. It's all around the area. Some telephone poles down. Uh, this is the back half of these houses. You can see how it's all warped and hanging. Uh, this house probably is not going to make it. You can see the cracks throughout the foundation. Uh, all the way through. All up along the front here. Let's pan back a little bit so you get an indication of what I'm talking about. The whole concrete lowered off the house. Um, see the sand all up in the front porch. The doors have blown off. There's a. F I don't even know what that is. Snapped off something. Um, I've passed several of them. I just thought I'd get them in the film too. They were embedded in the macadam. As you can see, we have some about uh, higher than every 50 feet or so. Um, they're all on very shaky ground. They're all leaning. Some are missing. You can see the spaces missing in between them. That's the ones that are on the ground. Um, 
pretty much lost it all in the front. Um, as you can see in back, you'll see more concrete base on the foundation. That was the way they used to build these things. So if one wall collapsed, the next one would take it over. So construction back in the 40s seemed to be pretty good. Uh, there's another example of roofing tiles missing, being blown off, gutters, downspouts. There's the back retaining wall I'm talking about. Like half the house is missing, but the other half was holding on. Here, I'll give you another point of view. I'm down on the beach right along the ocean line. I'm standing at sea level, right at the breakers, and taking a shot up of the area that we just took a look at. Uh, pretty well destroyed. Um, just for my own interest, I just put the wind filter on my camera. I think this is the first film I've ever shot. Um, we'll see if we notice a difference as I am down the beach line, trying to muffle out some of the sound of the ocean. You're going to see a whole bunch more of these. <laughs> Lately, I just thought I'd show this picture. This house is in relatively good shape. It was undermined. Straight ahead's the end of the inlet. This is the uh, last beach gazebo on Manasquan on the beach. This whole thing was surrounded by macadam. Um, the bulkhead that you see in front, you get up to that. I'd never seen that before. I assumed that the beach walk was over top of it. Um, that was all macadam, as you can see all the way over to here all the way across, so I've never seen that part of it. And of course, you can see the floorboards are bowed in front of me here. This used to all be macadam walkway. And then these posts are what's remaining the chain link fence that used to be able to keep people from falling into the channel. This is a big fishing area, people leaning against this, this fence for fishing. They have piled sand into dunes all the way down the channel. They fear another high tide, and the one area that we just couldn't take more water from would be this channel. There's nowhere for it to go. So this is where the bulk of the sand has been going now temporarily. Classic Jaguar, old one. <clears throat> it still hasn't been out. Uh, it actually floated and pushed its way through the garage door. That's where it's maintained itself because of sand. We have a still picture of this. Um, they've dug a lot of sand away from it. But uh, this will give you an example of the kind of job that these people are in. First down. Uh... Yeah, it'll be beach bro. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. This is aerial footage from the Mammoth Cable helicopter. Down in this area, we, we're, some of the homes had some frontal damages, porches were taken off and so forth. Uh, but the, this area right here between Ocean Avenue and Riddle Way held up fairly well. You can see the walkway still in place, the gazebo did collapse. And going from uh, Riddle Way to our uh, main beaches held up pretty well too. You can see the dunes are still intact in those areas, by the way. Now we're starting to get into the area that uh, really had some severe damage. Uh, we lost most of the walkway from Briel Road South, which we're coming up to now. Um, where it's not lost, it's seriously undermined, and, and the en engineers say we may have to uh, reconstruct it anyhow. Now, right here, there's a couple houses that uh, has real, serial, real serious structural problems. Uh, that particular house right there, in fact, one of these owners has informed me that they, uh, you know, they're, they're we're really having difficulty uh, deciding if they want to rebuild or not at this point. And uh, just to give people a time frame, that used to be a huge beach right there, and you can yep. just see the water right underneath the, the bottom. There's, of the there's a good 10 to 12 feet of sand missing right there. Um, we should mention what's going on in these off streets right now. You had almost two foot, three foot of sand in some spaces. Well, we, in one like place, Tom, we had six feet right behind that area we just passed. Uh, there was six feet of sand in one area. The accident was well over the roof of a classic car that had been pushed out of a driveway. And this is uh, crossing over the Manasquan Inlet. Right. Here's a good overhead shot from where Frank was shooting his tape. Uh, this is a, uh, of course, a flyover with Mammoth Cable's helicopter of the entire beachfront. Uh, it's a few days later. I think it's on a Monday. Uh, you can see some repairs being made, but a lot of damage. The macadam broken up and whatnot. Uh, we're coming down the home stretch on the tape. We're just about ready to wrap it up. It'll just show the rest of the beachfront, and we'll end at Seagirt Camp.
Uh, in any event, uh, thanks for watching, and before we run away, we'll give credit where uh, credit's due with the titles at the end of all the folks that were gracious enough to loan me their videotape, for which, uh, you know, otherwise this uh, tape just wouldn't be possible. So we'll give credit where it's due. Thank you.
Mm-hmm.